Welcome back to the afternoon section. Uh, my name is Yi Chui. I will be uh, moderate the uh, class two. As you can see from the report, class two includes many, many chapters. It's a very important part of the uh, energy assessment. Uh, it includes energy resources and technology options. Um, you can see from the report, we have uh, energy generation, all the resources where you can find energy, to energy transformation, delivery, and efficient use of the energy as well. So in this afternoon section, we are lucky to have a very distinguished panel of uh, speakers and discussants uh, to talk about selection topics in this area. Um, let me do a quick introduction for all the speakers. We have uh, Robert Schock as the first speaker. He's the senior advisor and former director of studies uh, for uh, the World Energy Council. We will have uh, Diana Urge Warsets. She's a professor in the Department of Environmental Science and Policy and director of the Center for the Climate Change and Sustainable Energy Policies at the Central European University. And then we will have Wim Turkenberg, who is the Emeritus Professor and former Head of Science and Technology and Society Department of Utrecht University. And we will have Sally Benson also uh, uh, coming as the last speaker to talk about uh, uh, carbon capture and sequestration. So after that, we will move on to the uh, discussion and panel discussion. We will have Arun Majanda from Google Energy, who is uh, pre uh, the uh, previous, also the founding director of uh, DOE RPAE, and Alexander Ox who is the director of Climate and Energy and the Woods Watch Institute. Now let's start by uh, the first speaker, uh, Bob Shock. Thank you, Yves. Get wired up here. Uh, the key word in, in this talk is systems, and I'm gonna keep coming back to that. And I think it's appropriate although we did it in the reverse order in the, the GEA, uh, it's appropriate to, to talk about this first because if you think about it, all of the individual technologies which we all love uh, and, and love to get involved in, if we're really gonna make anything happen, we have to talk about how it fits into to a system. So uh, the emphasis in, in my remarks will be on the system and uh, uh, if you think about it uh, a bit, if you're a, a technology uh, investor or, or a technology uh, industry, really, uh, a financial investor or even a policymaker, and somebody comes and wants to, uh, all right, no, yeah, and wants to um, uh, invest in something or ha make something happen the first thing you're going to ask is, what's the system? So look, going forward, systems are, uh, have always been important, but they're going to be even more important. Um, so I'm gonna try to convince you, we are gonna try to convince you, we who did this chapter, that thinking about systems uh, is something that has to be done. That's not to minimize any of the individual uh, technologies. The second key word that I'm gonna uh, uh, stress is changes and try to give you an inkling of the changes uh, that are taking place now and are likely to take even more pla place more rapidly in, in, in the future. Um, you will note that I've put two names down here because there are two chapters that deal with energy systems. One with energy systems today and how they're evolving today and another one looking way out into the future. And Anand, uh, who will be here tomorrow, did chap led chapter 16. Uh, but we worked together and we uh, tried to make a smooth uh, uh, transition. So when you read the... Um, uh, uh, the material, you, you probably ought to go from um, 
from one to the other. I'm looking at the clock up here, but it's not moving. That's good. Uh, <laughs> um, so that's the first slide. And this is just the uh, uh, almost obligatory but very important indication of the people who worked on uh, chapter 15 and, and, and chapter 16. Energy supply systems really are very complex. And, and this is an oversimplification. I don't expect that you will be able to read anything, let alone everything. But basically, we go from various uh, uh, energy sources down here up through energy carriers. In some cases, the source is the carrier, for example, natural gas, um, and uh, up to a whole bunch of end use uses. And in the report, we've tried to indicate which ones are important and becoming more important, which ones are not important now but might become very important uh, in the future. Um, Now, uh, <laughs> now I'm going to be timed. There we go. Um, so in terms of future energy systems, uh, the report talks about providing, and we talked, heard a lot this morning about providing affordable energy services to everyone by 2050. Um, Naki had several slides that said 2030, but, and I, you forced me, Naki, to go back and look, and I did find 2050 in the report, but it doesn't matter. At some point in the next 20 or 30 years, 40 years, um, the, the goal is to provide energy services to all. Now, I put the next bullet down because that tends to, to lead many people, I think we're all past that, many people to gravitate toward rural areas where people don't have um, uh, access uh, uh, to energy. Uh, but I put down cities are the key because if you think about it, uh, so many things are happening uh, in urban areas and the affordable part applies to urban areas as well as rural areas. And uh, the point I want to make or we want to make in the chapter is that anything that's done to, to deal with the problems of uh, in, in cities uh, will benefit people in rural areas. Um, the uh, uh, Arnulf uh, a little bit later is going to talk about urban energy systems, so I will uh, I, I will not go into it any more deeply, other than to leave you with a couple of numbers that tend to get lost. Over the next twenty or so years, we can expect in the world to see something like 10 cities of 7 million people, uh, new ones, every year. Usually when, when you read this or when I talk to people, their eyes glaze over because they begin to think of that many cities over the 20 year time frame, but it's every year. So cities are, are uh, I want to amplify on what Arnulf will say, cities are terribly important particularly in terms of energy systems, that's what I want to talk about here, uh, because uh, that's where we can probably do the most good and the rural areas will benefit from what gets done uh, in, in those areas. And not to be overlooked, if, if you're an energy industry, the markets are tremendous in the urban areas. They're, they're not quite so... Um, are robust in the, in the rural areas. So we, we need to, uh, my, my, my point is we need to think in terms of, of, of cities. Uh, I also want to make, the, the report makes a, a point that the, the energy systems that we're moving into need to be made much more flexible. And, and there are two main drivers of that. One is the kinds of technologies that are coming along to be able to adopt to those technologies. And we, we're not sure which are the winners and which are the losers, but flexibility is key to, to, to doing that. Uh, and also rap rapidly changing social needs. 
<clears throat> and electricity is, is a good example. Kurt talked about it this morning, and we'll t I'll talk about it uh, in a minute. It's an example of being flexible. Um, uh, if, in that chart I showed a little, a little, uh, a few slides ago, uh, it's an example of being flexible from the sources to the end uses. Lots of energy sources can be used to make electricity, uh, carry things through, and then lots of different uh, end uses. The last bullet uh, was touched on again this morning, and we'll touch on it more later, and that is in order to implement uh, the systems of the future, and this is amplified in the, in the report, the existence of stable gover governance policy frameworks uh, is required. And that tends to very often get overlooked. But the point uh, I think we need to, to, to make and continue to make is that technologists and, fi and financial institutions and policymakers need to work together and get into a uh, a, 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 a stable situation. We had a brief conversation at lunch, and I'm sure you'll hear more in this session. There's some critical questions that come out. There are lots of questions in, in the chapters that I'm talking about, um, but some critical questions are, will the future competition be between energy sources? If, if we go back 100 years, that's more or less where we started, but things are obviously changing. Will it be between end uses? Uh, will it be between sources and end uses or integrated systems? We have some ideas, or it could be some combination of all of the above, but we need to keep that, uh, that uh, question in mind. And then uh, Kurt talked a bit about intelligent energy systems this morning. We'll talk about some more, but uh, I, I think we need to keep asking the question, what does an intelligent system look like? I don't think it's, we don't think it's cast in concrete. Um, in, in, in its overall outline it is, but in, in, in detail uh, it's not uh, that clear. Um, and will we know one when we see one? So let me begin with electricity. Uh, as, as we've said, it has the ability to transform a broad array of, uh, of resources into useful goods and, goods and services. Um, a, a statistic that's in the report, um, which I find interesting, and I think you will too, that if we could double the amount of electricity that's projected in 2050 in a business as usual scenario, we would probably get, given what we know about how electricity interacts uh, in the world today, we'd get a two-thirds reduction in carbon emissions. Um, some of that is efficiency fair bit of it is, uh, and we'd get a 50% increase roughly in economic output. Output. Kurt, by the way, who just came back, was one of the, you, if you didn't notice, he was one of the authors of, uh, of, of chapter 15. Um, so the goal is to get everyone up to at least where advanced economies are today, uh, roughly 2,000 kilowatt hours per year per capita. The U.S. is about six times that, a little more than six times that, uh, if you're looking at comparisons. Um, and then to repeat what I already said about cities, in 2050 it's expected that two-thirds of the population of the world will be in, in cities, in urban areas. Um, and there will be fundamental changes in, in infrastructure, um, really centered around more control of the infrastructure. Um, things like small distributed power units, things we're seeing today, low voltage uh, generation, con uh, combined heat and power, CHP, active control and, and balancing and increased use of, uh, of ICT, information and control technology. Um, this is an example from a paper by Clark Gellings, who is here somewhere, um, which Kurt has used quite a bit, but it's a good example of a smart electricity grid. Uh, you will notice that uh, uh, there are offices, uh, housing areas, um, a, a wind farm, a, uh, some, some, an industry, um, and a central power, the, the conventional central power plant, 
all integrated and all connected in real time uh, with the digital grid so that decisions can be, that the system can be monitored, decisions can be made, um, and as Kurt pointed out this morning in Hurricane Sandy, people uh, who had, who, who lived in, um, or, or, or worked in, in areas that, that uh, had their own in integrated grid, uh, basically survived the, the power outage, which a fair bit of the Northeast, uh, 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 by contrast, was out of power for about two weeks. Um, the other point I want to make, and my time's running out, is look at these little canisters that, 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 that are used here to indicate energy storage. We, have, we briefly got into energy storage this morning. This points out how important energy storage is, um, and one of the you know, it, 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 it's, it's throughout the whole system. It's in the, the neighborhood, it's in the farm, it's in the, the uh, industrial plant. Uh, and we, could, we need to do a great deal more uh, to, to improve storage. So if there's an area that, that demands increased R&D, um, one of the areas is, uh, is storage. And I could talk about that a, a lot more. I put down here a defining role uh, for storage and, and needed research. This just shows you why you need storage. Uh, this is New York uh, in the summer months where the, the peak power goes really up uh, and, and causes problems. Um, I want to talk about, we, 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 we could talk about a number of different systems. We could talk about a natural gas grid, for example. But, but we want to, we, we, we talked, we talk about all of those in the chapter. Here I just wanted to mention hydrogen. It has, it also, like electricity, has the potential, has the flexibility uh, uh, and, and, and the societal advantages and the technology is there. Um, and it's in a whole bunch of, of things. Um, it's used in a whole bunch of different areas today. Uh, but a key are fuel cells. Uh, and if there's an area that needs a great deal of research now, it's fuel cells. I like to think of a, a fuel cell as an electrolyzer one run backwards, and that fits into the grid concept, that, that, that you can take water and you can make hydrogen, or you can use hydrogen to make water and get, get energy out. Put energy in to, to make hydrogen, get energy back out to use the, to use the hydrogen. It's also, uh, the next to the last bullet, an excellent storage medium. So you can be using electricity, and, and that's one of the ways you could potentially uh, store it. Uh, so the development of fuel cells is key. This just shows you, not to get into Vim's talk, but uh, if you, all the different ways you can make hydrogen from renewable energy. Um, I'm going to skip over demand-side management in the, in the interest of time, uh, but there's a great deal of that in in the report, um, and uh, it has a tremendous uh, potential to make the whatever grid you're using um, uh, much more efficient. Um, and there's an example at the bottom of electric peak clipping and valley fillings and, and load shifting, and this is just a pictorial which, which shows the same thing. This, you have to go to the report, I don't expect you to be able to see this, but this shows the potential combinations, the real and potential combinations of, te of various technologies, too many to, to even read on here, uh, with different colors indicating where they are in their, their, their current development. So I, I put this in here to give you an indication of the kinds of things that are going to change our world in the next 10, 20, 30 years. So what's the future? Uh, technologies are avail the technologies are available now, but they need more sustained investment and supporting policies. And where are we headed? Uh, to answer the question of where are we headed, I think we need to look at innovations and experimentations, the kinds of things that are going on. I should say we do. It's in the chapter. Uh, things like hybrid systems, look at sources and production, combined heat and power, much more of consumers being producers 
um, simultaneous uh, delivery of energy and non-energy services. You'll see much more, more of that. We're already seeing a fair bit of it. Storage, I think you'll we'll see things in storage, distributed generation. I want to mention ESCO's India. Um, uh, that, that's an energy uh, uh, services company that basically provides things, and there are examples today in, in India uh, that, that seem to be working well. So my bottom line, our bottom line is expect great changes, expect rapid changes, expect winners, expect losers, and expect surprises. So thank you.